Hickok 45 here and I am about to do a little policing of the range. It's getting a little messy and I need to police it up a little bit. You want to help me? <laughs> uh oh. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if that did any policing. I think I made it messier than ever. But this happens to be the Police Service 6. Kind of like the Ruger Security 6, except the Service 6 version with non-adjustable sights. Hopefully you saw the first video we did on the Security 6. Okay, I'll link to it. But this is the uh, Service 6, one of the three in that uh, trio. Okay, Speed 6, Security 6, and Service 6. And this one says right on it, Police Service 6. Okay, like a lot of gun companies, uh, Ruger wanted the, the police market. And uh, gun companies have done that. <laughs> since the beginning naming firearms uh, you know names that will be possibly uh, more attractive to to the police service it was a chief special or or whatever and uh, plus this was the kind of the plain Jane version of the security six which would be more economical and maybe you know good enough you know for uh, for you know a duty gun uh, not that you just want a bare bones gun but i mean it's, it's good enough the sights are fine their sights are not that much better as far as i'm concerned uh, you know me i like sights like this as long as they're on uh, i prefer sights like this just a a gutter dug out of the frame and then a, a front sight that i can see and if the sights are on uh, look at that you don't have those big sights sticking up and that kind of thing so anyway this this was the police model now even though it's called that that you know, anybody might have bought one and, and that sort of, just like a chief special, or detective special, cult detective special. Lots of people have those who are not real detectives is my guess, right? Because I had one at one time, sold to a friend. So anyway, the uh, to, to continue your education uh, on the Security 6, again, this is uh, the, the Service 6. This one is the Security 6, as well as this one, and, uh, you know, just in different finishes, all right? And they graduated to the GP100 later on. They quit making the Security 6, the Service 6, and the <laughs> Speed 6. Uh, I think it was uh, around 88, 89, and uh, they beefed it up, basically, because these are they're pretty strong. You saw in that other video I'll link to uh how they're made it's a solid frame even though they're kind of a k-frame you know smith and wesson k-frame size they're the cylinder's a little bit bigger than a uh, k-frame smith and then the frame is one piece you saw i took the uh you take the trigger mechanism out of there and it's just all one piece uh so that that adds to the strength of it but still if you're firing a lot of really hot ammo continuously uh, a heavier gun is better. It locks up in the front of the, the cylinder here and locks up right there instead of out here and uh, just a, a, a sturdier firearm, okay? Heavier, uh, just more meat to it. So a GP100 is just a sturdier firearm, let's face it. But these are fine, these are fine. Most people are not gonna wear one of these out anymore. They're gonna wear out a, a, a Model 19 or a K-Frame Smith, right? So. Uh, I won't repeat everything and I won't take one of these down because we did that in the, the security uh, six video But I wanted to remind you of a few things and show you this uh, This is a police trade-in I got from uh, from Australia Okay, it was uh, made by Ruger of course in this country and then uh, Bought I guess for a police department or whatever in Australia and then came back and now uh, this company I looked up and it's a uh, it's an FFL company of some sort, I guess a, an importer or a distributor, I'm not sure, Hoshton, Georgia. I, I did look them up, but I couldn't find out a lot on them. But that's who it came back through, I guess, you know, imported it back into this country. And then, uh, uh, I guess, Bud's bought, they bought a bunch of them from them. So, uh, so pretty cool. Uh, police trade-ins are generally a good buy. We're fortunate to have some ammo. Okay. Check them out. Uh, so anyway, I just wanted to show you this one. Uh, this Actually, uh, the Security 6 is a cool gun. I confessed my sins 
in the video on the Security 6 about how I neglected these, learning about them for so many decades, because I was eaten up with Smith & Wesson and Colt. Uh, I, I just was, I'm sorry. And uh, I, I didn't really learn uh, what was out there as much as I should have. I mean, you can't do everything. I mean, so many guns, so little time, right? And uh, again, I apologize for just now getting to the Security 6, the Service 6, the Speed 6, you know. I mean, after all, Ruger made, uh, I think, about a million and a half of these. So there's a couple of them out there. A lot of you all have owned them, right? Many of you have carried them on duty, no doubt about it. And uh, I've just been neglectful, I'm sorry. Uh, I've had GP100 for a long time. I, I just had not tried one of these, and uh, I've seen them around, and I'm, I'm really glad. In fact, I like them a lot. You know, I bought one, and, uh, you know, for myself. I just feel like I, I owed it to Ruger uh, for my, uh, <clears throat> my sins of omission, as I said in that other video. But, you know, my favorite is this, and uh, I, I'm, I'm going to donate that one, and uh, I'm going to uh, see if I can find... And by the time you see this, maybe I have it, but I would like to find like basically one of these, uh, maybe in, in, in better shape. I don't know, this isn't bad. It's kind of beat up, but take a look at it there. So, cause you know, this will be uh, on E-Gun or at some point. It, it's kind of rough. It's mainly, I guess, the grips, but uh, you know, that's the neat thing about these old police trade-ins. Their firearms, it usually are kind of scuffed up. They've been carried a lot, but they've not necessarily been shot that much. And they usually make really nice firearms, uh, you know, for whatever purpose, planking, self-defense, whatever you want to do with them, uh, unless you're looking for a pristine model that looks like it just came off the showroom. Let's shoot a couple of Magnums in it. One, two, 357 Magnum. It is a 357 Magnum. These things, uh, they were available in 357 Magnum. Also, 38 Special. Now, we know you can shoot 38 Special in any 357 Magnum, but there were some that were just chambered for 38 Special as well as 9mm, 38 Smith & Wesson, uh, what am I forgetting, seems like something else, but anyway, uh, you can learn up about them, study up about them, they're pretty cool, and they're kind of collectible, you'll find them around, but uh, they're not cheap, I'm, I'm sure probably 10 or 20 years ago, you could buy these things for nothing almost, uh, used ones, but uh, they just, uh, they're pretty desirable, you know, old revolvers. Let me take a couple of shots with this thing. Let's blow up a two liter. How's that? Whee, doggies. How about, uh, ah, did we shoot? No, I didn't shoot that too. Oh, yeah, I did. Let's do a little pot here. Not that far away, but just to illustrate, even though you have like non adjustable rear sights, Unless you can figure out how to adjust that rear sight without a file. I'm not sure even the front one is not going to be easy to adjust, right? But like that, if the sights are on, you know, what difference does it make? Uh, you, know, you can adjust your elevation for your power factor. In fact, maybe I'll reach out a little bit with this one. Uh, so like I said, a million and a half of these things were made in various configurations. Uh, probably most of the police departments got this version of it. Uh, not because it was written on the side of it, but uh, been a little less expensive without adjustable sights. And you don't necessarily need adjustable sights. I, it's my opinion, okay? And you know, they made these real strong. I don't know if I mentioned in that first video about the Security 9. They offset the bolt uh, grooves there, if you notice that. On Smith & Wesson, generally, there was my screwdriver here, there we go. Uh, the bolt cutout is like right there, the thinnest part of the chamber where the round is, but these are a little bit offset, so they're in a little bit thicker part of the, uh, the you know, the cylinder wall there, and, and you know, and that's, that's considered a plus, you know, for a revolver. You're trying to get by with the least amount of metal and, and all that, uh, but still have your strength, so if you cut a big gouge in it at the thinnest part, that could make a difference. I don't know that it ever has, but it probably could. All right, now I don't know, I haven't shot this a lot, but I'm gonna try it over there. Uh, see if we can hit the gong. Okay, we're going. I'm going to go low. Yeah, there we go. That's right. I remember now. You have to hold low. 
Yeah, that's right. I learned that in the Sunday shoot-around. I had this out with shooting, so I forgot already. I have no IQ. Uh, Mr. Cowboy, let's hit you. <laughs> Boom. Yeah. So, you just have to know where to hold with what ammo you're shooting. And then, uh, in fact, probably I don't have to hold as low if I shoot magnums. Are these magnums? Yes. These came from that box right there okay you appreciate the federal's help here i'll tell you now just for an experiment i'm going to shoot at the gong again and see if i uh, need to hold as low yeah about the same Okay, I'm going to try that ram. I don't know where I'm going. I'll try a little bit lower. <laughs> I'm just slinging lead. I'm sorry. It's getting dark over there. I'll blame it on something. But uh, it, the Wendy's is right on. You just have to figure out your elevation. And of course, it's not designed for shooting at 80 and 70, 70 yards. Uh, so I will link to the video on the Security uh, 6 where I talked about all the options. But uh, this is the, the workhorse of the, of the crew, in my eyes, the, the Service 6. And again, it does come in a Speed 6 that has a, generally a shorter barrel, usually a 4 or a 2 and three, 3 quarters, I think. And it has a little bit of a rounded butt. And so, uh, you know, your police models and the uh, Speed 6 models have non-adjustable sights or just like this. And the Speed 6 has a little bit of a rounded butt, not dramatically smaller. And it generally comes in the shorter barrels. But now this one, let's see, I think the uh, Service 6 was available in a 6-inch barrel, though. And so you might see one of those around. The Security 6 was definitely available in a 6-inch barrel. These are all 4-inch barrels. So nice target uh, revolvers, uh, defensive revolvers, whatever, and a variety of grips. So lots of grips available for them, options, and, and that kind of thing. Made well. Uh, uh, I took it apart in the Security 6 video and showed you how they come apart pretty simply and how they're made, one-piece frame. Uh, very interesting uh, firearm, no doubt about it, and uh, I have been neglectful in not learning and knowing more about these. I, I really have, as I've developed a little more appreciation for the Ruger design, you know, the simplicity of it. Uh, just, just pretty nice gun. And uh, I don't have to tell you that the 357 is a very, very uh, popular round. Uh, very versatile round. You can shoot 38 specials. Here's some, and some, even some different 38 specials. You know, lead hollow points. Just such a variety of ammo available uh, that you can fire in one of these. Varying uh, power factors. So you're recoil sensitive, or you have somebody who's just getting into shooting. You can not only shoot 38 specials. You can shoot some 38 special plus P with a little bit of power defensive ammo or you can shoot regular 38 special or even some really light 38 specials that you feel like you're shooting a 22 in these heavy revolvers so very very versatile okay so they came in blue and lots of uh, you know those two finishes stainless and, and blue and were just uh, pretty popular uh, they got uh, they were adopted in fact by I think the I don't know if it was widespread, everybody in the Border Patrol, but I know the Border Patrol bought some of them. So there was at least a partial adoption there. Uh, the post office, uh, the post office police or whatever that group within the post office, there was an adoption there, I think of the Speed 6, okay? And uh, so, and then a lot of civilians bought them. So it's pretty successful, it really was a million and a half. It's a lot of firearms. And uh, they, they cost about 25%, I think, less than Smith or a Colt. So that was a huge attraction, as we all know. Everybody's looking for the best firearm for the money. And uh, it offered that, as Ruger typically, I say did, I don't know about does. I, uh, that was my impression of Ruger back in the 70s and the 80s. It, wow, bargain price. And I don't know, nowadays, if you go look at a Smith, and you're trying to decide between a Smith L frame or a GP100, I think that gap is closed up. 
somewhat. Now you tell me, not a lot of difference in price, but there used to be, uh, there used to be. So anyway, the, uh, the police service six, want to uh, bring that to you and, uh, and again, remind you about, you know, the police trade-ins that are available. Maybe in your gun shop, you go into a gun shop quite often, you'll see some, uh, or online, uh, where someone's gotten a bunch of them, you know, like Bud's had with these, they may be gone by the time you see this, but I mean, they, periodically they'll have police trade-ins like, like any uh, company, gun shop or whatever that buys a lot of guns, they, they look for those, I think, and uh, are, are glad to find them, get a good deal on a bunch of used guns because they make a, a great option, they really do. Once you go out and shoot a firearm, guess what? It's used anyway, so it's just a matter of the condition. And police trade-ins are a, a great option usually because, like I said, they're carried a lot, but they're generally not fired all that much, and they're not worn out from, from um, you know, extensive firing. So uh, uh, a good option. <laughs> this one definitely has been carried a lot. Somebody down there in Australia packed this thing around quite a bit, maybe in the outback, and they, they beat it up a little bit. Look at those grips. So this one has some character. Uh, and I, did I tell you, this one was made, I think, in 70 or 83. I believe it's the 1983. And uh, so that's when they were made, 72 to 88, basically. A very popular firearm of the time. And uh, you probably, many of you have had one. You've owned one. You, may own one. you might own one right now. So tell us what your experience has been with it, okay? Or if you have owned one, you know somebody that's had it, what they thought of it, how it lasted. Was the GP100 really necessary? <laughs> did they wear theirs out? Have you worn one out? Did the uh, forcing cones split on you from firing it too much? You know, what's, what's the durability factor in your uh, opinion if you have one? So anyway, the uh, Service 6 is a, is a pretty neat little revolver. You know, I like these little functional guns like this that don't have a lot of busy stuff on them. You know, I got one firearm right ground off the hammer just to smooth it out and uh, yeah, I'd be tempted to do that on one of these if it was still fire, okay? Uh, an old used one like this kind of beat up. But anyway, the uh, the Police Service 6, uh, one of the versions, the three versions basically of the Security 6. You know, the security, the the service, and the speed. That's the three categories. And uh, they're all the same revolver basically. But uh, pretty nice and uh, glad to be able to bring it to you and then shoot one of these for a change. They're just a lot of fun, great revolvers. Life is good. Oh, fire. It's a long walk from where I had to shoot that. Oh, man. Oh, hey, didn't see you guys there. Since you're here, I want to let you know about our friends over at Talon Grips and Ballastall. TalonGunGrips.com. Check out everything they have over there. You can get lots of different grips, stick-on grip textures for your handguns and rifle grips. So go check them out. Also, Ballastall. They're a firearms lubricant or anything else you might need lubricating. Uh, it's water soluble and non-toxic. Been using it on the compound and cleaning all of our guns. It's a cleaner and a lube for over 10 years. So Ballastol, Talon Grips, definitely check both of those companies out. And also, while you're on the internet, don't forget to go to Hickok45.com. You can also find us on Facebook, Hickok45, Twitter, Hickok45, Instagram, The Real Hickok45. And also, I have an Instagram page where I post behind the scenes stuff and different things like that. John, J-O-H-N underscore H-I-C-K-O-K-4-5 on Instagram. And uh, the next thing you have to do is watch more videos.